We are live, sir. Good evening, all. I, Mr. Chirag Tucker, soft skill trainer, Nagpur branch, Maharashtra zone, welcome you all to the event, the Epic Emperors of India. The history of India begins with the birth of Indus Valley civilization. More precisely, it is known as Harappa civilization. Our history consists of the great dynasties, rulers, heritage, the base for culture, ethics, and values. Our little kathakas of grade six are trying to tell us about it in the form of a story narration. It is important that our younger generation should know about it in detail. To explore the same, we have with grade six students to narrate the story of Chauhan's dynasty. We have with us Vandana ma'am, regional software trainer. We welcome you ma'am. Vandana ma'am, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chirag. Yes, rightly said. Uh, our little Kathakar are here to talk about the history. Uh, well, to begin with, good evening all, the phase two and the YouTube viewers. Today, I take the privilege to let the sixth graders of Narayana E-Techno School showcase their wonderful talent. Yes, of course, these students have done exceptionally good work by putting in a lot of hard work and efforts. Well, we all have known about our dynasties. The sixth graders once again will take us back to a virtual tour of Johan Dynasty. We also have amongst us uh, Mr. Vinay, our team leader. His inputs, timely on and off, uh, have made this event a grand success. May I please request Vinay, Mr. Vinay, to address the gathering? Thank you, Vandana ma'am. Good evening to everyone. Uh, having studied and researched about uh, Johan's dynasty, you all are here you know, to present the Chauhan's dynasty, literature, art forms, and so on and so forth in this evening on a virtual platform. Good to know that. Even I'm uh, glad to see all of you, in fact, uh, you know, with the different costumes here in this uh, pleasant evening. Good ma, all the best. Do well. Thank you so much, sir. So without wasting much of time, let us begin the virtual tour of Chauhan's dynasty by Great Six. Okay, so first we have Ashish Jha and Agrani Purani who will tell us about the origin of Chauhan's dynasty. Over to you, Ashish and Agrani. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good evening, all. Today, you all are going to meet young India flying with its color and also with its incredible past. Today, I, Agrani Ravi Puranik, and my teammate Ashish Jha is going to tell you about origin of Chauhan dynasty. So, Chauhan dynasty is the dynasty which used to rule on some parts of India. So, this starts from Ajayrat Chauhan, who was son of Prithiraj Chauhan first, the situated city named Ajmer. And also, that period was known as construction or starting period of Chauhan dynasty. Now let's see about origin of Chauhan dynasty. So here we find many opinions of different different archaeologists and historians. So first concept which we find is of Agnivansh. So Chandra Badai, who was poet and who wrote Prithiraj Raso, he says that Chauhans were origin from Agnivansh. Also, Mohanod Nancy and Suryamal Mishran says the same. According to this Agnivansh concept, Rishi Vashishthi did one yagya from which four Rajputanas were origin. First, Pratihar, second, Parmar, third, Chalukya, and fourth, Chauhans. Now, second concept which we find is Suryavansh. According to Gauri Shankar Hirachandra Oja, Nayan Chandra Suri, and Chandra Shekhar, Chauhan's are origin from Suryavansh. Now, third concept which we find is Brahman Vansh. So, according to Dr. Gopinath Sharma, Chandra Shekhar, Dr. Gopinath Sharma, and Jan Kavi, Chauhan's were origin from Brahman Vansh. Now, according to this Brahman Vansh concept, uh, on behalf of Bijolia inscription, from which one line Viprashivat's Gotre Bhut tells us that they are related to Brahmins. Now I pass over to my partner Ashish 
so that he will give you more information about origin of chauhan dynasty thank you thank you granny uh, for passing on me now let's see what is the fourth concept of uh, of chauhan so the fourth concept of uh, chauhan were brahman vansh so according to dr dashrath sharma jan kavi gopi nath sharma chauhan belong to brahman vansh which is known as the indra vansh so according to the sevadi inscription of the ratnapal ancestors of chauhans were born from the eye of indra so we believe that chauhans may be originated from one of the vansh now the question arises in our curious mind is that from where the chauhans came so jainak who written the prithvi raj vijay in that he says the real name of chauhan is charman also says the real name of chauhan and give the meaning of each letter respectively that is chap hari man nay or niti the person who gave all of these equalities belong to chauhan Ch 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 so thank you thank you so much ashish and agreni you have beautifully uh, narrated the story i mean the origin of chauhan's dynasty now we will move towards invention okay inventions what all inventions did chauhan's have done okay so for this i would like to call vidhi chandak and reva bal subramaniam over to you good evening teachers and friends my name is vidhi chandak from bhanga branch I'm from Maharashtra zone. Today we will share our research about inventions of Chauhan dynasty. In the olden days, invention was not so much use of technology, but it was more use of knowledge to build practical solutions to common problems. In our Indian tradition, we can often associate inventions with the with the construction of temples or lakes or dams. Now you may wonder what had science got to do with temples and lakes? Well, many scientific principles were used in their construction. Then, hence we may not associate any modern day gadgets or instruments with the inventions during the Chauhan dynasty. However, during this era, there are plenty of examples to see the use of principles without really using any scientific technology. Here are some examples of the inventions of the Chauhan dynasty. Alnuraj defeated Turks invaders and built Anna Sagar Lake. He also built Vara Temple at Pushkar. He was killed by his elder son Jagdev. Prithviraj III took over administration and appointed Pratap Singh. He crushed Nagarjuna, burned the Nayaks, and fought to Parma the Dev of Chandel of Mahoba. He launched Mission Digvije to defeat nearby rulers. Prithviraj got built Pitogar, which was demolished by. Kutub ud din Abbas and converted into mosque Kuwait ud Islam. This was India's first mosque. Vasudeva is has founded the Shakhambari branch of the Chauhans. As we all know by now, the Chauhans have a lot of linkage with mythology. Though many of us associate mythology with myth or something not so real, this is not always true. When we dissect mythology with a minute mirror, we can see some association with science. Same as with the Chauhan dynasty. According to a mythical account in Prithviraj Vijay, he received the Sambhar Sat Lake as a gift from Vidya Dhara. Vidya Dhara is a supernatural being. Ajay Raj was son of Prithviraj I, who expanded Chauhan kingdom. He made Ajay Mere a new capital, now called Ajmer. He constructed Talagar Fort. He issued coins of silver and bronze. Some coins had name of his queen Somal Devi. He established village Somalpur. He followed Shaiv religion but was secular and donated gold to Pashurna Jain temple. Vikramaj Four expanded the Chauhan territories and captured Delhi from the Tongas. Sanskrit is one of the most ancient languages in the world. The la this language stands testimony to many scientific discoveries. During the Chauhan dynasty, Sanskrit language was important in importance, especially during the reign of Vikharaj IV. He built Saraswati Kandhabha.
Khan and Sanskrit school at Kashmir, which was then demolished by Qutubuddin Ahmad, and the very first mosque of Rajasthan was built over it. As mentioned earlier, during the Chauhan era, science was used in day-to-day -day use. The Bisa Sagar Dam, constructed by Vikraj Fort, is another example of the same. I would now request Vidhi to conclude our presentation. Thank you, and back to sir. Thank you, Vidhi and Reva. The inventions were really amazing of done by Chauhans. Now, I would like to request Darsh and Vidhi to take over and to tell us about the education system and art forms during Chauhan's dynasty. Over to you, Darsh and Vidhi. Hello, everyone. Myself, Vidhi Kaushik, and I'm from Maharashtra Zone, and he's my partner, Darsha from Maharashtra Zone. We both welcome you to the world of history. So, Darsh, can you tell me what's the topic for the day? Yes, yeah, sure, Vidhi. Our topic of the day is the epic empire of India. Thank you so much, Darsh. Here we go. The Chauhan tenacity or the Rajputs were... Just a second audience. The Chauhan dynasty or the Rajputs ruled parts of the present day of Rajasthan and neighboring areas of our country between 6th and 12th centuries. Rajputs were famously known for their bravery. They considered courage and valor as they, they considered courage, courage and valor and valor known for their bravery. They considered courage and valor as their religion. They gave importance to ideals of courage and valor and considered them to be very basic principles which each Rajput must follow to the last breath of their life. The Chauhans or Rajputs were big-hearted and generous. They were proud of their origins and lineage. They were a brave and a very honest clan. Rajputs thought to provide shelters to refugees and even to their enemies. The war victory campaign was the biggest future of Rajput society. The society sadly was distributed as there was a lot of disparity in the standard of living of people. Those days, the Chauhans or Rajputs believed in caste religion system. I will be elaborating upon the education system that was prevalent during the times of Chauhans or the great Rajputs, as we say. During the reigns of the Rajput dynasty, education is as such is limited to a very few, as the society was distributed on the basis of caste system. Very few who are considered to be elites are allowed to get educated. When it comes to gender equality, seen in contest with education, it was in bad shape. Women were not allowed or to pursue subjects like philosophy, literature, or was studies. They were only allowed or supposed to get basic education in basic basic subjects like singing or painting. The Rajput's rulers patronized literature. A few of the Rajput's, Parmara, Bhoja, and Munja, are well-known scholars of great repute. Their famous literary works are Rajmiganka, Yukti Kaltaru, and Sabda Anusanda. Bhoja patronized literacy giants such as Padmagupta, Dhanika, Rajashekhara, Raja Shekhara was the author of the drama Karpura Manjeri, which was written in Prakrit language and was patronized by Mahendra Palla of Kannoj. Jayadeva, author of Gita Govinda, was patronized by King Lakshman Sena of Bengal. Varnakula literature also made a beginning in this period. Khem Suri, a great Jain poet, deserves to be remembered for his services. The great Rajput were also great builders. A particular section of the society was allowed and supposed to study and master architecture. Even today, we can see astonishing works completed during their reign. Forts like Kumbhalgar Fort of Kumbhalgar and palaces like Sajjanpur, Palace of Udenpur, were built by the Rajputs and are marvelous pieces of architecture that even stand tall in the testimony of their architecture legacy. Last but not the least, while speaking of Chauhans or Rajputs, one cannot conclude without throwing light on the great Prithviraj Chauhan. He was the last ruler of the Chauhan dynasty. 
to sit on the throne of Delhi. He was a brilliant child and a very sharp at learning military skills. He mastered a great skill of hitting a target only on the basis of sound. He succeeded to the throne of Ajmer at the age of 30 when his father died in a battle. One can speak of Johan till eternity and their legacy will continue. They were great rulers and contributed immensely in the upbringing of our society. They were our forefathers and we are proud to be descendants of such a brave clan. I hope this information would be helpful to you all. Dash, can you tell me and our audience something about the art forms of Chauhan dynasty? Thank you so much, Vidhi, for your great information. Now I will be sharing my information about arts and architectures. At the time of Chauhan dynasty, the architecture and the art which people used to do is called Vastukala and the Shilpakala. Now we will talk about paintings made by Chauhan dynasty. The paintings were made of natural colors and no synthetic colors were used in the making of this painting. The colors was usually extracted from minerals, plant body parts, valuable stones and shaving of gold and silver. The brush used for painting was made of hair from squirrel tail or plant twigs. The famous and the fine Rajasthani paintings were not limited to paper and canvas. The beauty made its way to the walls and ceiling of many places, spots constructed in that era. These beautiful art pieces can still be seen on our walls of the city palace in Udaipur. However, the most significant full form of Rajasthani paintings are miniature paintings, which are done on silk, paper, wood and sometimes on marble and ivory. Now we will see the architectures made by Prithvi Raj Chauhan, Venkatesha Temple. Remembering the king of Chauhan dynasty, Prithvi Raj Chauhan or Rai Pithura on his birth anniversary, Prithvi Raj dedicated to the Lord Shiva. The temple is considered to be one of the oldest temple in India, as it is believed that it was built in built by Prithvi Raj Chauhan in 1175 Anodamidi. There is a flame known as a Khandajyoti or eternal flame, which is believed to have been burning since ages. Every Monday, there is a Maha Aarti at the temple and a big fair is held. Every year during Mahashivratri festival, temple is located in the Bhind, which is around 80 kilometers from Gwan. Now we will talk about second architecture made by Prithviraj Chauhan, a cigar fort. Ancient fort of Asigar is located in the town of Hansi, the state of Haryana, also called Hansi Fort or Prithviraj Chauhan Kakila, located on the eastern bank of Ampil. Site falls under the category of protected monuments by the government of India. I hope that my information will be helpful to you. Thank you. Yes, Darsh, absolutely. The information was really very helpful. The art form was really beautiful of Chauhan's dynasty. Uh, we also, now I would like to introduce Veda, ma'am. Uh, she is HOD of our department. I welcome you, ma'am. Veda, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shirag. In fact, I am so yes. happy to see the children, the way they're dressed. And, you know, talking about the Chauhan dynasty. Very well, uh, uh, students. I think, uh, you know, the screen looks so colorful when I'm seeing it from here. In fact, it, uh, you know, brought in a, a smile on my face. Very colorful, very nice, very informative session. And the, the confidence that, you know, the way you are all presenting is definitely an admirable one. All the very best students keep rocking. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rag. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, now... Let's move towards the archaeological artifacts by Advait and Sansita. I request Advait and Sansita to give us information about archaeological artifacts, artifacts of Chauhan's dynasty. Over sure, to sir. You. Sure, sir. Thank you, host. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Advait Shakar Shasagar from Maharashtra Zone. Today, we are going to discuss on the topic archaeological artifacts. Now, what this term archaeological artifact means? Oh, I'll tell you, the artifacts is arguably the most fundamental and all-encompassing term in both modern and historical terms. Archaeological practice broadly defined it as an object created or modified by a human culture. 
revealing inscriptions. It was written of more than 13 kings of this dynasty. The main three languages were Rajasthani, Gujarati, and some Vedic Sanskrit. It mentions Hamir Dev, the last Chauhan ruler of Ratambor, as Kul Raja. Strong evidences were found and later was stated as a fort. Cultural activities done in this period. The Chahamanas commissioned a number of Hindu temples, several of which were destroyed by the Gurid invaders after the defeat of Prithviraja III. Multiple Chahamana rulers contributed to the construction of Harshanta temple, which was probably commissioned by Govind Raja I, according to Prithviraja Vijaya. Simraja commissioned a large Shiva temple at Pushkara. Chamundraja commissioned a Vishnu temple at Narapura, modern day Narbar in Ajmer district. Prithvirajavan built a food distribution center, Annasatra, on the road of Somna temple for pilgrims. Someshwar commissioned a number of temples, including five temples in Ajmer. Vigraharaja IV was known for his patronage to arts and literature and himself composed a play too, named Hankeri Nataka. The structure that was later converted into Adai Dinka Jopra Mosque was constructed during his reign. Now I pass on the topic to Sansita. Thank you. Thanks, Adve. It was wonderful information that you provided us with. Now, I, Sanchita Mahapatra from Maharashtra Zone, will be continuing with the same. First, I would be talking about the coins found by archaeologists that were made by the Chauhans. Archaeologists have found several coins of the Chauhan dynasty. Most of these coins were made under the rule of Adve Deva, Prithvira III, Chahada Deva, Prithvira II, Someshwara Deva, and Vigra Raja IV. The coins found were mostly made up of material like silver, villain, and silver copper alloy. Coins of the Chauhan dynasty were basically dull green color and were mostly made up of silver copper alloy. Now, how exactly did these coins differ from those of the other Rajput dynasties? These differed in their general fabric and appearance. The dual metal, nominally silver, and pure copper coinage made by the Chauhans in the early 12th century met local needs for currency. The coins of the Chauhan dynasty were basically dull green color. The coins, which were made of copper, had a crude man on the reverse and a queen's name, Somala Devi, on the upwards. The earliest Chauhan inscription was a copper plate inscription found at Hansel. A marble statue of goddess Saraswati was made by the Chauhans in the early 12th century. This was also found by archaeologists with many details on it. Now, let me talk about the rulers. First, I will be talking about Siharaja who was an Indian king belonging to the Shakambari Chahamana dynasty, who ruled Sapada Laksha country, which included parts of present-day Rajasthan in northwestern India. He was the first Chahamana ruler to assume the title Maharaja Dhiraja, now Chahamuda Raja. He commissioned a Vishnu temple at Narapura. Prithviraja I built a food distribution center on the road to Sonap in the for pilgrims. Someshwara commissioned a number of temples, including five temples at Ajwar, as told earlier. Vigraharaja IV, also known as Vishala Deva, was the Chahamana king in northwestern India. His kingdom included major parts of present-day Rajasthan, Haryana, and Delhi. That's all I wanted to speak to you. Now, I would like to thank my teammates, Adwet, and everyone else listening to me. Thanks for your attention. Have a nice day. Thank you so much, Adwet and uh, Sansita. The artifacts were really unique of Chauhan's dynasty. Now let's move towards the administrative structure by Soyansh and Bhumika. Over to you. Soyansh and Bhumika. Bhumika? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Soyansh? He's not. Okay, okay better. Continue. The Prithviraj Vijaya calls him an Amsa of Madhuvesha. To the writer of Hansi inscription B1226, Prithviraj II is undoubtedly Rama. Prithviraj Vijaya gives him the same honor to his cousin Prithviraj III. Both Nani's Khyat and Kanha Dev Prabhanda regard Kanha Deva of Jailer as an avatar of Krishna or Gokulnath. In the city, the heyday of their glory, the Chauhans ruled over, over the whole of Rajasthan, the modern centrally administered uh, area of Delhi, and the Ambala division of the Punjab, large parts of this vast tract 
uh, world as now covered by the inhospitable Thar Desert. Other either irrigate, irrigated by the river Yamuna, Chambal, and Banas, or receiving better rainfall, must naturally have been more popul populous. There may have been also more water in the Saraswati Basin than at present. Thank you. Thank you, Bhumika. My name is Swans Tripathi and I study in class 6 in Narayan Group of Schools, Maharashtra Zone. And I am going to speak about the Chauhan dynasty. In the Chauhan's domains, as elsewhere in the Indian kingdoms of the period, the rulers formed the keystone of the administrative arch. Legally, he was an absolute, very big monarch the head of the civil as well as the military head. With his power circumscribed indeed by the will of the overlord. If he had any poets and scholars described as his divine, sometimes even identifying him either with the Vishnu himself or one of his famous avatars, the Sivalik pillars inscriptions. So thank you everyone for listening my speech. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much, Advait and uh, Bhumika. It was uh, Bhumika and Soyanj. It was very nice. Now I request Atharva, Atharva Upadhyay and Siddhi Nandanwa to tell us about the lifestyle of Chauhan's dynasty. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. I am Atharva Upadhyay with, no, with my teammate Siddhi Nandanwar from Maharashtra branch. And today we are going to present the lifestyle of Chauhan dynasty. As you all know that Chauhans were one of the most powerful rulers in India in 6th to 12th CE and they ruled over Rajasthan and Delhi. They were very heighted and strong personalities. They used to spend child, their childhood away from their home in a school called Gurukul. There they would learn discipline, rules and regulations to rule a kingdom smoothly, various war strategies and would practice different types of weapons. After coming from Gurukul in the age of 21, all the royal families would help their king in running the kingdom. They would use chariots, horses and elephants to travel. Hunting was the favorite pastime for Chauhans. They had very large armies containing hundreds of horses, elephants, soldiers and weapons. Now I like to request Siddhi to continue further. Thank you Atarva. You have given a wonderful information about the Chauhan's dynasty. Now I will continue with the rest of the part. Women of Chauhan's dynasty where the earliest garment is seen on sculpture and painting and was a simple length of fabric stitched like a tube like a drawn stretch fin. More and more fabric was added and it changed from a simple straight garment into a very full skirt. Up to 20 meters of fabric was used. Cholis, they used a quick loose worm with long sleeves. Cholis with silk fabric. Ordinary, the fine long piece of fabric was over the head is called Odini. Chauhan wives usually wore a heavy ornament with pleath dresses. Some Chauhan king made a ghagra for his daughter, full and covered with jewels. It was too heavy. Men of Chauhan dynasty wear coats which was affordable. The long sleeves of coat and was down to above the knee in length. It opened and the front and usually buttoned. The angharas is a long sleeves gown. It, it was the favorite garment of Chauhans. The name angara is derived from Sanskrit word angarakshan. Now I will ask Atharva to continue with the weapons. Now moving on to weapons. There were two types of weapons used in that era, Astra and Shastra. Some Shastras were bows, arrows, javelins, etc. 
as well as were swords, mace, knives, etc. Weapons of those times were very powerful. Now coming to swords. Swords were used to slash their enemies. They were made of copper which was flexible and bronze which was hard depending on the metal tin in the alloy. The sword training was given in their childhood in the gur gurkuls. Now coming to shields. Shields were used to protect the fighters from arrows, sword attacks or javelins. They give massive protection to the fighter. The shields were held in the hand. They were made up of wood, animal hide, woven reeds, poplar tree, lime and another split resistant timber and were frequently covered with leather or rawhide and often reinforced with a metal boss, rim or banding. Now I request Siddhi to continue the rest. Amas, the ruler of Shoan dynasty were largely dependent on the irregular forces which have to be obvious to the account of Jagirs. The holders of the Chauhans, uh, the holders should give the services to ruler of the ruler. And now I will pass to as we all know that Prithviraj Chauhan was the last ruler of the Chauhan dynasty. He was very powerful, courageous and intelligent. He defeated his enemy Muhammad Ghani not one, not two, not even three times, but 17 times and also forgave him which showed his kindness even to his enemies. With his, with his death, courage, truth, kindness, intelligence and powerfulness also ended. Such brave and kind-hearted were, were the Chauhans. And with this note, I would like to end our speech. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you so everyone. much. Thank you so much, Atharva and Siddhi. The Chauhans were, were really kind and brave. And the lifestyle of Chauhans was really different comparatively the lifestyle, lifestyle which we are living. Thank you, Atharva and Siddhi. Now, Let's move towards the health, medical occupations and inventions of Chauhans. For that, I would like to welcome Tanushri and Alina. Tanushri and Alina, over to you. Good evening, myself Tanushri, the one, the guide. Good evening, myself Alina, the guide. We are from Maharashtra Zone. Today, we will take you on the tour to Chauhan Dynasty. We will tell you some information about occupation of Chauhan dynasty. So let's get started. The post office occupation of former cabinet members remains basically unexplored in both single case and comparative studies. Is being a minister just a carrier out court or does serving in executive office facilitate movement to other positions? This article sheds new light on this question by advancing the theoretical development and empirical understanding of various types of post-ministerial occupation. The analysis takes into account ex-ministers' ambition, political capital resources, and the institution opportunity structures that might well affect both ambition and individual resources. Thank you, Alina, to give us such a nice information. Tanushri, do you know who is Puranika? Yes, I know. I will tell about Puranika. Under Hamamira of Ranthambore, we also find an Amamatya called Puranika, who, like the Prahota of an earlier period, may mainly have been charged for the religious affairs. We do not know the destination given to this officer in our other Johan kingdoms. Maybe it kept up an old destination. The ministry's function was largely advisory. The last word of the minister always leaves with the king. Vigraharaja IV, for instance, rejected the advice of Sridhara and Arnaraja, that of an old and experienced minister. But during emergencies, the minister was good and did a good deal of authority. When Prithviraja II died without leaving any son, the ministers brought over Sumishwara from Kuchra 
and put him on the throne of Ajmer. On this date, they made the Windward Queen Karnapura Devi the regent for her minor son, Prithviraja III, and helped her to administer successfully the affairs of the kingdom in spite of hostile neighbors on almost every side. Thank you, Tanushri, for such a nice information. Minister in charge of poets and pundits, the Prithviraja Vijaya mentions one Patmanapha as a minister whose duty consisted in calling conferences of learned people and who was also in charge of their reception. This new post, a unique one in Indian history, might have been created in the region of the Kavibandhava Vigraharaja fourth, though later it fell in some ambience. Thank you, Elena, for this such a great information. Anushri, do you know who is Sandhi Vigrahika? Yes, I know. I will tell about Sandhi Vigrahika. He was, as the war of signifies, the minister for peace and war. But in addition to this, his chief function, he was required to draft royal charters and dispatches. Sandhi Vigrahika Khiladatya is mentioned in the Kiradu inscription of Alhana and Ojra Grand too. Hope this information was helpful for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Tanushri and Alina, the information was really helpful. Now, I request Ruchira and Chahek to tell us something about rivers and transportation, languages, scripts and encryption of Chauhan's dynasty. Over to you, Ruchira and Chahek. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Myself, Ruchira Vajpati from Maharashtra Zone. Myself, Chahek Tana from Maharashtra Zone. Please continue, Ruchida. Yeah, today we are here for a great event, which is Epic Empires of India. And the topic, the topic is rivers and transportation. Languages and scripts. Now, my friend Ruchida will tell more and brief information on its rivers and transportation. Before starting, Chehek, tell me, do you know what, uh, do you know who are trans? Mm, I don't know. They are known as Shahmanas of Shakambari. Oh. Now, do you know who was the founder of Chauhan dynasty? Yes, I know this. Ajay Raja who established the city of Ajmeru in 1113. Correct. Now, let's start the presentation and get into it. Chauhans. One of the most ruling dynasty of Rajasthan, time was AD, 1658 AD. Now, the subtopics I'm going to talk about are rivers and transportation. First, let's talk about rivers. Sambasol Lake, the most popular lake in those days. This lake is India's largest salt lake. This is 80 kilometers southwest to the city of Jaipur and 64 kilometers northeast of city of Ajmer. These are some of the pictures of Samrasol Lake, the aerial view, the map, and the locational view. The history of Samba Lake. Archaeologists found many things during excavation. They include terracotta structures, coins, and seals. Now, let's get on to the transportation. As we all know that, there were no trains, no aeroplanes, no cars during the period of Chauhan. But do you know how the Chauhans traveled? They just took help from the animals such as donkeys, camels, horses, etc. If they didn't bear money, they just walked footsteps. Now I uh, request my friend Shahek to continue the presentation. Thank you, Ruchira. So the subtopic I'm going to talk about is the languages and scripts of Chauhans. As nowadays, we use a book for writing. Do you know what was the source of writing during Chauhan's medieval time? Mm, don't know. Could you please tell me? Before answering this question, now can you tell me from where do we get to know the history of Chauhan's? Mm, don't know. This information seems amazing. Could you please tell me more about this in brief? Sure. 
The information is obtained from the script and the inscriptions found during excavation. Now, I will tell you more about the information found on the inscriptions. According to the 1170 CE Bijolia Rock at Someshwara, the early Chahamana king Samatta Raja was born at Ahichatrapura in the Gotra of Sage Vatsa. Historians theorize that the rulers of Ahichatrapura moved their capital to Shakambari or the present day Samba as their kingdom grew. Later, they became Gujara Pratihara followers. The earliest script and literacy works state that the dynasty's progenitor was a legendary hero named Chahamana, who born who is born from the Indra's eye in the lineage of Sage Vatsa and during the ritual sacrifice performed by Brahma. Ajmer inscription of the Shakambari Chamana ruler claimed that the Chamana belonged to the Solar dynasty. They came to the earth from the Arkamandal, which means the orbit of the sun. The word Johan is the vernacular form of the Sanskrit term Chamana. Several Johan inscriptions name Chamana as their ancestor, but none of them state that in the period which he lived. Wow, Sahak, this information is really so uh, informative. Please tell, where are these scripts and preserved now? These scripts and inscriptions are preserved in Nalanda University. Oh! Do you know how the Chauhan's dynasty ended? Uh, yes, the Chauhan's dynasty's power effectively ended. In 1192, when Vigrih Raja's nephew, Prithviraj Chauhan, defeated. Wow, the two to di Chauhan's dynasty was amazing. Thank you, Ruchira, for sharing the information regarding the rivers and transportation of Chauhan's. Thank you, Chai, for such a nice information. And scripts, over to you. Thank you, students. It was really amazing. The journey of uh, Chauhan's dynasty was really amazing. Thank you, Ruchira and Chek for sharing the information on transportation and rivers. Now, I would like to hand it over to Vandana, ma'am. Well, children, uh, exactly as Chirag sir said, excellent performance by all of y'all. Uh, Mind-blowing. Uh, yes, I would also love to have something from Vinay, sir. Sir, if you could just outline the entire episode for uh, the children, it would be great. In fact, uh, I was overwhelmed by the presentation, ma'am. In fact, uh, it was a very good presentation by Team Maharashtra. You know, the way they, have, they had presented, you know, the costumes they used, you know, the body language they used, for everything, in fact, uh, wonderful, something amazing. Good children, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm sure my kids are all motivated and they're looking forward for the next episode. Uh, yes, Chirag, I hand it over to you to propose a vote of thanks. Yeah. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank all the students for uh, taking efforts for making the event successful. And I'm also grateful to Vandana ma'am and Vinay sir for their continuous support. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, children. Thank you. Thank you, children. Yeah. So we can end up the session. Okay. Thank you, children, once yeah. again. Thank, Thank you, Vinay sir. Thank you, Chirag sir. Bye-bye. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, students. Bye. You all robbed. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have a nice day, everyone. Vandana, ma'am? Yes, yes. Please wind up the